Welcome to the Michigan Travel Show, a kaleidoscope of stories about the people, places, and events that shape our great state. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Gary Morgan with the Michigan Travel, Michigan Runner, anyway, here in Mitchell, South Dakota. Gateway to the Painted Hills. Anyway, uh, stayed here at this cute little town last night and uh, this pretty cool place. I uh, went by some of the Painted Hills yesterday. Didn't have time for the camera to be out, but uh, stayed in this cute little town, just ran around it and uh, like I said, checked it out. Stayed at one little bed and breakfast joints. This is such a cute little town. And I uh, got their make-believe bicycle here. And of course, there's the business loop. And then, over this way, thank you from Mitchell. Visit us again soon. If you ever get a chance to stay here in Mitchell, Oregon, do it. It's not as famous as Mitchell, South Dakota, home of the world famous Corn Palace, but surrounded by a canyon here. And I'm currently on a journey through time um, loop road uh, going around Central Oregon, uh, going to some um, old places, uh, National John Day uh, uh, Fossil Camp, uh, National Monument. And today I'm heading down to some uh, caves that are part of a national monument. Okay, well there it is, uh, this journey through time of Morgan Cine Byway I've been on for a long time since I left uh, Dulles, uh, Oregon along the uh, Columbia River and... Heading for the Painted Hills. I'm almost there, John Day Fossil Beds National Monument. Okay, coming up to it. Part of the painted rocks here in Oregon, right there's part of it. Yep, red and all the different colored rocks, sandstone. And then it goes out into well, the painted hills. Pretty cool. Well, we're all the way here finally. The John Day Fossil Beds National Monument Painted Hills Unit. They say that's one of the seven wonders of Oregon. So here, I see the visitor center over there. The hills here, they aren't all painted, but it is kind of cool here. And we're all surrounded all the way. It's kind of like a valley. Cool, and a dirt road coming in. Pretty cool. Pretty spectacular. Here is the overlook. This is pretty cool. There it all is. Beautiful 360 trail here, 360 view. We're up here underneath a little bit of a sh shelter, but this is the view up here. Wowie, like I said, the red sandstone and rock mixed in with gray, kind of a basin down there. This is interesting, painted by the past. Climate change doesn't happen overnight. Anyway, these colors are from a uh, when they had, it says red bands formed in the warmer water climate. And over time, they gave way to the yellow so that uh, formed in the drier times. Eventually red disappears completely in higher rock, leaving the yellow and tans that dominate the Kerala rim in the distance to your left. The iron red pelescals indicate a warm and moist in environment. The yellow and tan soils indicate a dry environment. The black spots caused by the manganese concentrates used to be forest here. You know, yellow layers were drier before the rainfall. Yeah, a beautiful view up here. Yep. Wow, wait, pretty cool. I love it here. This is awesome. Well, part of John Day. Okay, well, here's John Day. This is interesting. He came here to Oregon in 1812 and uh, looking for a fur, Pacific Fur Company. Anyway, uh, they said the, his stuff got robbed and uh, 
So then uh, I became well known at the trading post. And uh, they said he never came here, but it was Thomas Corndon who named this area in John Day because of the river's role in a landmark and its importance in eroding and exposing fossil bearing rock layers. Yep, there's been in there, it's three sections that I've uh, visited along the way. But yeah, this is the Painted Hills unit. So, yep, pretty cool. Absolutely beautiful here. One of the huge mounds here, big hills. We're in a little forest here. Okay, we're at the Painted Hills unit. And uh, like I said, the John Day Fossil Beds National is one park, three units. Sheep Rock, Painted Hills, and Clarno. And I visited all three. Clarno and Sheep Rock yesterday, Painted Hills today. And that's what they all look like. And over here, the wildflowers of Painted Hills. Kind of cool. Great view right here. Down the picnic, it says, look below the surface. It's interesting, all the different ways, all the different rocks and minerals and everything else, and, you know, trees or fossils in it, kind of cool. And, of course, they talk about here, some of the trails up and through here. Yep. I went to the Leaf Hill Trail. There it is. And working together to uh, protect, uh, conserve this area. Yep, with the ranchers. Well, as I'm driving down the road here, you can see Three Sisters Mountains here in Central Oregon. Uh, they had a lot of snow here this winter, but a beautiful here in the Central Oregon area. As I'm getting a little closer to uh, Bend and uh, then down to Caves National Monument. But okay, beautiful spot here called Lost Creek Lake. Wow, wait, this place is beautiful. It's uh, obviously a dam dust spot, pretty cool. Yeah, there the, this is kind of a dam here, cool. Hard to believe I'm finally here at Oregon Caves. National Monument and Preserve. Anyway, uh, I gotta head up to the visitor services and cave tours just up the road. This up on top of a mountain. This pretty cool spot. Well, only in Oregon. On the walk up to the cave up here. So we'll see what the deal is gonna be here soon. It'll be an interesting deal here. I'm here at the lodge here where I'm gonna get my ticket. And here. At Oregon Caves National Monument. I'm in the visitor center here for the Oregon Caves as I'm getting ready to go on the tour. You guys are okay. Usual beautiful lodge here okay. and uh, getting ready and they got a decorating a cave. Cool okay. Caves are always cool and uh, discover the wonder of the parks. We're going through a journey of geological time. It's kind of cool. Uh, this can be a 90 minute tour of uh, biodiversity inside and outside of the cave. And here it is Oregon Caves National Monument Preserve. The rugged Cisco evolves a curiosity, a longing that draws people from ridgetop to, to ridgetop with a half conscious expectation that the next first shadow hollow must hold something marvelous. David Raines Wallace. Arthur. Author the Klamath Knot. Cool. And there's some fossils, obviously some places I went yesterday. Anyway, time to go out and the tour. We're heading to the cave. They said it's about a 10 minute walk. So, Oregon Cave, National Monument, set aside by President Taft in 1909. Department of the Interior, National Park Service. And right here, here's the entrance. Water flowing out of it. This is the entrance. We're going in. Pretty cold there. We're going to go into the cave right there. 
That's pretty cool. There's the line. There's another line. There's view. Trails. And that's where we're going to go in. Elijah Davidson discovered the Morgan Cave, November 23rd, 1874. His dog ran in there and he went looking for him. Came into the cave, there it is. Different. So here we go. Water in here. Oh, water fountain there. Had a water but it's a waterfall. This is how we're going in. And now we're in Oregon Cave. Pretty cool. Right here. Inside the cave here now. So this is where we think Elijah fell this way down to the water and then followed the water right down the cave. Not a lot to see here, but you can see the waterfall. Lots of water in here. And that rainwater, as it's falling down through the air, it picks up some carbon dioxide and that makes carbonic acid. So rainwater is naturally really, really slightly acidic and that acid is able to dissolve away the rock. Take that rock away as the water flows out, and that leads to the cold rock, which is the cave. And they make formations. And right here, we don't really have formations like stalactites and flow stone and those sorts of things. Well, here in the cave. And the reason why we don't have them here is because the this air is really good. The outside, right? There's multiple openings, there's lots of flow. In the winter, it actually freezes right here. Freezing water. So, lag tights up there, the water droppings. And all these formations, they're connected not just to the air outside that makes the rainwater acidic and the rainwater itself, but they're also connected to the soil outside. Because when the rainwater hits the soil, it picks up extra carbon dioxide and it gets extra acidic. There's lots of living things in the soil that do a really similar process that our bodies do, where we use oxygen and we release carbon dioxide. So there's extra carbon dioxide. Those fins are thin enough, we can actually see through them. And we can see the layers of calcite that have built up over time. And it kind of looks good stuff. It's really only caves and the ocean where you can find darkness on our planet. <laughs> yeah, and I mask that works too. <laughs> but like in nature. <laughs> yeah. It's not for us in algae or anything. No. Okay. Douglas fir trees, they send tap roots down really far looking for water. Yeah, it's right it's dry in the morning in the summer and I gotta have some water. Pretty cool. I mean, if the roots reach the bottom. Bacteria. It's really strange that some bacteria made their way down from the forest and they're actually helping make one of our cave formations. This is called the imagination room because it is super fun to use your imagination and look at different shapes in the rock. Does anybody see a shape in this one? My here's the path I'm hiking down right down that way and here's the path I just came and we're heading back to the visitor center right at the back side of the visitor center walking down from the uh, part of the cave <laughs> 